Okay, from the the honorable speaker, fellow students, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to today's webinar. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Sonia Lohana, a PhD scholar in UTM Malaysia. I will be responsible for hosting this presentation today. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. First of all, I would like to welcome all this prominent webinar about Let's Learn SPSS with Prof. Aminul, which is held by the Center for Graduate Studies, CGS, and Graduate Student Association of UTS in collaboration with national and international universities of Malaysia, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, and Nigeria, and platform research and development. I would like to thank you to all universities, postgraduate societies, advisor, and the president of UTM, UKM, UDP, UPM, MU, Utah, and the lecturer from UNIMAP, Tennis University, Capital International University, Bangladesh, Northern University, Bangladesh, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, East Delta University, the Samia University of Bhagalpur, Pakistan, Cambridge Institute of Technology, India, Abu Bakr Baba Bella University, Bhaji, Nigeria, and the Yush Foundation to help us throughout in our webinar. Get to know that the more than 1,000 participants from the different university or organization over 29 countries across the world to register for today's webinar. Thank you once again for joining us for today's webinar. Last but not least, even slides will be shared after the event, and the feedback form for e certificate will be shared during the session in the chat box. So don't leave out the material and the certificate. Enjoy today's webinar. I hope this webinar will give you all the insight, our insight and the knowledge regarding the theme of this webinar. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our speaker, Prof. Aminu, will, will deliver a presentation in, in title, Let's Learn SPSA. Prof, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, and very good afternoon for those who are participating from Malaysia and uh, very good morning uh, very good evening for you know the participants who are attending from different places um, I think we have so far about 900 uh, participants registered uh, I see online I think they have not come yet that they are coming slowly so um, I will start a bit slow uh, so that we can have more uh, participants uh, from the beginning uh, today's session is a bit technical. Uh, it's not like the normal webinar I used to do. Uh, so I will go very slow. Uh, I'll make sure that everybody uh, can follow me. Okay. And also uh, for this webinar, I will assume, I will assume that uh, no one knows his PSS at all. Okay. Many, this is the first time we are. Uh, hearing about SPSA, so this is the first time you are attending the SPSA session. Uh, that's where uh, and how I'm going to start, okay, from very beginning, from zero. And uh, I strongly believe if you are with me for four sessions, uh, initially I thought three sessions should be enough, but now uh, I revised my thinking. I think I need to have about four sessions uh, to make everyone a master into the software, okay? Okay. Um, uh, and then SPSS is basically, I think most of you know, I'll put the slide afterwards. Uh, let me talk a bit uh, before, uh, let me see how, um, um, you know, to, to allow more participants to join uh, the session from the beginning. SPSS stands for Statistical Package uh, for Social Science. 
and uh, it's a, it's, it is one of the most widely used software. Uh, there, there are softwares uh, which are very specialized. Uh, some softwares only for qualitative, some only for quantitative, some softwares only for social science, some only for engineering, some only for uh, medical sciences and all that. But SPSS is, is a software uh, which can be used in almost every field uh, you know, of research. Uh, I used to have many visitors uh, to my office coming from medical universities uh, as well as engineering uh, to run the data, getting some advice how they can run the data. Uh, so it's not only the social science, uh, definitely other field people who does a survey and market research that uh, they can use the software. Okay, so, um, uh, and uh, what kind of data and all that uh, slowly as we move on, uh, you will learn it, all right? So this is not a face-to-face -face realization. So. Uh, any question, you can put it in the chat box. Uh, but for today's session, I don't think there should be a lot of questions because this is the very primary, uh, the beginning uh, session, introductory session on SPSS. Uh, you have to closely follow me, uh, basically. Okay, I'll go very slow to make sure everybody can follow me. All right. Um, for today's session, if you don't have SPSS in your computer, you can still follow me. Uh, see me, how I do it. And then the video would be available in my YouTube channel. So later, once you have SPSS in your computer, either laptop or desktop, you can follow the video and then uh, you can learn it, okay? So the video is going to be forever. It is going to be there. So as many times as you want to see and practice it, you would be able to do it. So don't worry about that. And those of you have... Uh, Software in your computer would be very good because, because you can practice uh, with me hands-on, practical, you know, uh, during the session. Now, uh, we have already uploaded the data uh, in the chat box. You can see it now, a platform for research and development. Under that, we have put the data link. You can download the data that I'm going to use. Uh, Ms. Sonia Lohana has actually uh, email all the registered participants the data uh, last night. Um, uh, I know some of you may not receive it. It could be due to the email address typing problem. Or it could be that the email is in the chat box. Sorry, not chat box, junk box. <laughs> uh, and you, you may not be able to see uh, the, 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 the files given to you. So if you do not have the data set that I'm going to use, it is already in the chat box. You can check a platform for research and development. We have just uploaded the data there. And uh, you download it and uh, keep it in the computer. Later, we'll use it. At the beginning, I will have empty uh, screen. So I'm not going to use any data set uh, to teach you how can you code the data and how can you key in the data. Only after that, uh, we would be uh, using the data set. Okay. All right. With that, let me share the screen uh, on the brief discussion on uh, species. Very brief. I did not really wanted to uh, put a lot of slides. Uh, it's more on uh, practicing session. So. Give me a few seconds. Uh, it's coming. I'm, I'm sharing. Okay. Uh, you, you can share. You can see the slide. Uh, I, I have put it there. Uh, I put very simple uh, title, let's learn SPSS. <laughs> okay, um, I'll still go, go slow huh? because I expect more participants to join and I want more participants to uh, uh, to learn. Okay, so I'll still go a bit slow and after that I will start the real session. So, um,
Okay. Um, those of you who are new with me, basically, I am sharing my email address with you, as well as uh, my WhatsApp number also there, in case if you need any uh, guidance, suggestions, and research, uh, you can always communicate with me. And uh, the line that uh, the, the, the YouTube channel that you are now watching uh, me, the session, uh, is the channel belongs to me. Uh, there are many videos are there. Uh, those of you who are planning uh, uh, to take up a PhD program, uh, you have many videos there. Uh, those of you already in the middle uh, want to do proposal defense or pre-viva, even final viva, all those uh, videos are available for you there. Okay, and uh, I see last few days, uh, most of you attending the session today have subscribed the channel. Keep subscribing, uh, all right, and uh, you will have more uh, uh, exciting program uh, uh, planned for you. Uh, once I complete the session on SPSS, uh, after that, I plan to uh, conduct webinar on Stata, uh, the software that is used for panel data analysis and all that. So participants who are pursuing PhD in economics, accounting, uh, finance, uh, you would be able to learn Stata in the next stage. And uh, followed by, I plan to also run uh, this. So these three softwares are widely used among the social science researchers as well as uh, engineering and medical sciences. So once these three software um, webinars are done, and uh, if you can attain all of it, uh, then you would be proficient in conducting quantitative research. <laughs> Sorry, there was some uh, technical issue. Um, I was out of uh, the steam yard. I'm not sure why, but anyway, I was out. Okay, let me just share the screen again. Share good name. Okay. It's not there yet. All right. All right. Sorry, there was a technical problem. I think now should be okay. Uh, so, SPSS is basically statistical package for social sciences. Uh, uh, even though we say it's a statistical package for social sciences, but we do also. Uh, use it for other discipline of research also. Okay. Um, 
So let me go through the, some little introduction on SPSS. So uh, we basically say SPSS uh, is a set of software programs eh, that are combined together in single package. So there are many programs being combined. Uh, as you know, statistic, there are so many statistical methods are available, parametric and non-parametric. There are so many statistical methods available. And for data testing of data reliability and validity, we do have many different different uh, programs available all those have been combined into one software okay so this basic application the basic application of this software is to analyze scientific data related to social science huh? the purpose was for social science so it helps you to analyze the data collected okay is a revolutionary software because research scientists uh, get facilitated uh, in processing the critical data in simple steps uh, I'm very sure some of you are with me now have used uh, SPSS before. And you know, it's a very user friendly software. Uh, it, it does uh, give you many features. As you go through, you will see uh, how simple a software could be by presenting, analyzing the data and presenting in a very simple uh, format. Okay. Now, uh, working on data, any data we collect is complicated and very time consuming process, huh? especially if it is. Uh, secondary data and we collect it from different sources uh, then uh, extract Oh, that's, that's okay. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, sorry, I'm a bit technical problem at the beginning. I'm sorry. Once we start the software, I think it should be all right. So, so, so I'm saying that uh, it, it, it is a combination of few software programs uh, in a single package, and then the basic application of this software is basically analyzing the scientific data. And we say basically it is a very friendly, uh, flexible software uh, that helps you to process uh, data, critical data in a very simple steps. And uh, as I was saying that working with data is very complicated and complex, and it could be very time consuming process. Uh, but because of the user friendliness, uh, this software will, would, be, would be amazing, you know, would be amazing uh, in analyzing and transforming data uh, into information effectively. So the output uh, that we uh, obtain uh, by using SPSS, uh, even uh, the software will present it graphically. Uh, the, the graphical representation would be also there for us to understand it better. Now, um, so basically we say it is one of the most popular uh, statistical package, uh, even though the use of uh, SPSS has reduced a bit. Uh, after getting a smart PLS, but uh, the smart PLS, the things a smart PLS can do, um, spaces can do most of it. <laughs> and actually what I did, uh, I tested hypothesis using SPSS with the same data I tested in PLS. And the result of hypothesis testing is the same, no difference at all, okay? So PLS basically has some additional features. It's like your mobile set. When you buy a mobile set, um, when you get a new one, it has some special features, okay? So Smart PLS basically has some special features, additional functions. That's what you see in the mobile set also, right? All right, and... Um, from all type of file, okay? And then it can be uh, generated in tabulated report. It can generate the charts and plots for you. It can help you to... Uh, uh, plot the trains and it does help you the complex statistical analysis that you have can be 
uh, done using SPSS. And that's why I was saying the capability of SPSS is truly amazing. Uh, some of us, we learn a bit and uh, uh, we feel that's it, you know, that is SPSS, but there's so many. अच्छा बुझ लाम पिता में इस्टी में जाके डुपता हो इस्टी में देखा जाच्छे ना मा किटा नो ओके और राइट ब्रादर राशिद कैन कैन यू सिया इसी मी ब्रादर राशिद सोनिया कैन यू हैमी मिस सोनिया is yes, it okay sir. now? Is it is it okay now? Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, okay, okay. I think that, that uh, we do not know. Suddenly we are being out of the steam here, so it's creating problem. So I don't know what is the problem. Suddenly I'm maybe, going out of the congestion. Okay. Um, can you hear me?
Can you hear me? Is the sound there? Hello? It is taken it from it. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now, Rashid Bhai? Hello. Is that okay? Can you hear me now? Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. I, somehow, uh, this is the first time we are having little uh, uh, problem, technical problem. We never had that during the webinar. Um, sorry for that. Huh? All right. Uh, so what kind of data can we use in SPSS? Uh, we can basically use uh, numerical data, the scale data, time series data. Huh? Uh, you can use both, either categorical or uh, continuous. Both data can be used. When I run this station, basically, uh, I will show you how uh, what happens when you have categorical data and when you have continuous data. What do we mean by categorical data and the continuous data? Okay, but both, both data can be used. Okay. So now um, I'm going to now uh, moving to uh, uh, the real session, hands-on session and SPSS. So those of you are in front of computer, uh, can you go to the SPSS and open the SPSS file? Okay, open the SPSS file and uh, uh, join me on the live uh, SPSS one. Huh? Um, No, automatically, my way that I could this. Okay. I need you uh, uh, to be on this screen now. Please come to this screen now. Huh? We have opened the SPSS. And then uh, basically, I will start the data coding now. So be on the screen as I have now. And if you look at the screen, uh, you have to look at the below one. As I move the cursor, you can see at the beneath, you have data view and variable view, OK? If I keep variable view, uh, this is uh, the screen that you see. So there's nothing there because this is an empty file, OK? This is an empty file. And this is data view uh, at the bottom. Eh? At the bottom beneath, I'm clicking there at the bottom. So in the data view also, there's nothing there. It's totally empty because we have not keyed in any data here. So it's totally empty. So variable view also empty, right? So please come to variable view now. Click on variable view from the bottom. Huh? I click on the variable view. And under the name, uh, say for example, when you set questionnaire, the first section, possibly uh, you will have questions on demographic variables. Say for example, the first one you said gender. You can type gender there. If you want to put uh, G in capital, you can put G in capital, gender, okay? Now, under the gender, you will always have uh, two, right? Uh, male and female. So we have to set that. So that's what I'm saying, the coding. You're coding the data. 
because this PSA can only accept the numerical number. It doesn't accept alphabets. Okay. So you type the name gender. Follow me now and click and the value you have a column after name you have type with decimal level and then you have values on the value on the right side you follow my cursor and click here then you will see a new box appear okay now the value i type one and label i type male okay then i can click on add and then i type value 2 and level female and i click on add so that's basically what i have so then after that you have to click okay so now basically i have already coded the first descriptive variable right first descriptive dimension that is gender male and female okay so if you click on the right on the value one you can see this is set so you can check it even later you want to edit it you can edit you can click here and it asks you to remove or you can edit you can edit and then you can change okay so you can change anything then you have to click on change you can even add you know you can type three and if you have anything more <laughs> you can add on there so those are available say for example after gender um, next one you have set as marital status so i said in a small term huh? aim status so i put it as aim status and under the label i can type in marital status in full so i can type marital status marital status okay so the printing would be based on what we label it the way you label it huh? that's the way it's going to print so I type it here in full, marital status. And we do the same here. Click on the right corner of the values column. And values say, for example, one, I put single. And we add it. Then I type two. And then we say married. Add it. Then. Um, what do we have after that? <laughs> we may have uh, divorced. Divorce and uh, says uh, divorce and separated. Oh, you can just put as divorce. Sorry, value would be three, right? Value would be three. And we can put divorce separated. And we can add it. Right, so that's how we are coding it. Huh? So when the questionnaire is single or married, but in the species is going to be one two. It's not single married, okay? So that's how we code uh, the data. So we have done the second one. Third one, say for example, education. Education. So education. Uh, you click again on the right, right? That's I said, right? Here you have to click on the right corner. So education one, say for example, we put it as diploma. Diploma. So we click on add. Then two, we put it as degree. And we add it. Three, I put it as masters. Four, I put as PhD. And five, possibly, I put it in others. Okay. So now you have to click. Okay. So again, we have already put the code for the education one. Those all are there. It's basically done. It is there. You can see one diploma, two degree, three master, four PhD, and five others. Okay. So. I can cancel it, so I want to keep it there. Um, those of you attending with me now, uh, can you do me a favor? Can all of you uh, share the uh, screen with uh, your Facebook? Uh, you can see under the video, uh, the YouTube channel, uh, there is a button called Share. You just click Share and uh, go to your Facebook and then save it, save it in your Facebook. You know, share it in your Facebook so that many other people can be benefited. 
can you do that now uh, i have done it now it takes only one second huh? one 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 two second for you to do it you can just click on share and then uh, you go to facebook click on facebook it will automatically shared in the facebook so the more people can be benefited okay say for example the fourth one is your status employee status employment status so i put employment underscore hyphen doesn't work s t a t u s okay and here i write in full employment status okay so here possibly say for example one um, i put it as uh, full time and we click on add we put to part time okay so you can add it so you have to add and then you have to click okay so this is how uh, we will uh, put the code uh, for categorical data these data are basically categorical data like gender you have two category male and female Marital status, you have single, married, divorce, and separated. Education, you have few categories. So these are called categorical data. It's not continuous data. Huh? Now, let me show you one could be continuous data, for example, like age. Age, you have a choice. If you want to keep it blank in the questionnaire, and people just write 23, 25, 30, 40, 60, whatever, then you just key in. When you key in, you will key in just the age. Otherwise, you may also put categories. Say, for example, value one, we say below 20. Okay. Then two, we say, for example, 21 to 30. Uh, three, we put 31 to 40. And five, say so we put above 50. Okay. I'm going very slow. I want to make sure everyone attending the session gets me. Okay. All right. So I hope you have done it. So then we click OK. If I don't want it, I want just empty, then I can just type, say, for example, age one. I put another way. And here I did not put any value because I'm leaving the age as blank in the questionnaire. Now, can you click on the data now? At the bottom, you have variable view and the data view. Now we are on the variable view window. Please click on data view. So I click data view. You can see now. I can key in the data. Say, for example, the first questionnaire, this one represents to the first respondent. So first respondent is a male. So I put one, right? Earlier, when you code it, male is female. Male, male is one, sorry. Female is two. Marital status, say married. So I put two, right? Earlier, remember? Degree is, uh, say master's. So it's three. Employment status, full-time, part-time. Say part-time is two. Age, we put first one in the range so say for example it is 30 to 40 so it is three and this one is when you keep the age completely empty people write their own age there in that case if somebody say i'm 51 years old he types 51 and that continues okay so that's how we key in say for example second participant he is a female she is a female so gender is female so it's two is mental status single, so it is one. Education is diploma, so it is one. Employment is status full time, so it is one. Age, she is below 20, so it is one. So that's how it goes. In order to key in the data, first of all, we have to code the data. All right, that's what we do first, coding the data. And after that, we start keying it, okay? Let us continue. So now, uh, if you have any other descriptive data, descriptive questions like that, you can have 
uh, position, you can have salary. You know, this is very common that we put in the descriptive. And if you are doing a study on very specific, specialized topics, say, for example, online shopping and all that, uh, in, in those cases, you might be adding on some more question, for example, like how frequently you do online shopping and, you know, what kind of product you buy through online shopping. Those could be also under descriptive. You have to also put the code for, for that, you know. You have to put it, well, I know, yes, no, so yes would be one, no would be two, and all sort of thing you have to codify with the descriptive kind of data, okay? So this is data view. So I'm going to go back to variable view again. So this is where now, huh? So now I am assuming that those of you who are participating in the session with me, all of you would be able to codify, huh? to put the code for descriptive data. Now I'm moving to your independent dependent variables. Now I have to make an assumption that uh, all of you are familiar with, with what we mean by independent and dependent variable, okay? I have to make that assumption. Uh, basically, for every variables that we have, B is uh, an independent variable or dependent variable or mediating variable or moderating variable. We will have some items. Items are basically the questions, the statements. So we put certain statements and we put a scale. So based on the corresponding scale, the respondents will tick. So we may have a scale like strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree, you know. So for each variable, you need to have minimum five, five items minimum. I will tell you why. I'll tell you why. For every variable, you need to have minimum five, st five statements. Uh, so data because so when it is validity and reliability you might be dropping some of the items. But if you are adopting widely used questionnaire, which has been tested by many, uh, you may have only two statements. That is okay. That is okay. But you have to make sure those two questions are really valid huh? and reliable. It. <laughs> okay. So I'm now moving to section B. Huh? Section A was demography. Section B, say, for example, your question one. And uh, this is my first independent variable. I have a statement. So uh, this way I'm going to code. Huh? Again, we are coming to the value. We click here. And those of you following me earlier, the same way of doing it. So I type Q1, and under the label, if you want to type the statement, the item is okay. Say, for example, I write, I am satisfied with my current job. Say, for example, I have that question. So I can type it there under the label. No problem. You can if you want to. If you don't type, it's still okay. All right? It's still okay. Basically, what a species does is, is looks at the data train, and from there, it analyzes, right? Uh, so when you run multiple regression and all that, I will explain you how does it work, okay? Now, uh, again, you have to click here. You have to click here. So value, say, for example, one. Uh, one would be definitely strongly, strongly. Disagree. Uh, many many uh, participants uh, will put a uh, strongly agree one. I I won't say you should do that. I say you shouldn't do that uh, because your highest point should be given to the positive side. Okay, so strongly disagree should be one. Strongly agree should be five. Okay, so strongly disagree. So I put it as one. Two. I put it as disagree. Okay, three is neutral. Four is agree. Five, strongly agree. Okay, see it again. Huh? So I put strongly disagree as one, strongly agree as five. Because that's the positive. So when you look at the mean, you know, the highest mean would be on the positive side, on the strongly agreeing side. Now, um, how many should you have in the scale? It is debatable. Huh? Uh, some researchers, they argue that you should not have any uh, criteria as neutral because nobody is neutral on anything. Either you agree 
or disagree. <laughs> but there are also argument uh, by many researchers that there are cases whereby a person may not agree or may not disagree. So we need to have neutral. <laughs> okay. So it's up to you. Um, I personally won't uh, say anything on it. Uh, for me, both are acceptable. You can have a, a fight, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree. If you do not have to want to have neutral, then you can have strongly disagree, disagree, disagree a little, uh, agree a little, agree, and then strongly agree. You can have six. And sometimes even you can have seven. So it depends on the kind of study you do. And we follow what the previous researchers uh, used to do, okay? All right, now we click OK. If you click OK, so basically that is what is said for you. If you click on the right again, you can see what you have put it there. It is there. So now, uh, this is the way we have to set it for all questions. So now I tap Q2, and I have the same scale. So am I going to type every time when we code the data? We don't have to. What you have to do is, the one you have done, here you, you right-click it, and then you copy it. You right-click, and you copy it. And then you highlight as many as you want. So say, for example, I highlight about 10, not more than that, no, no, not 10. You can highlight even 100, no problem. And then you right click. And then you paste it. So all those are there. I don't have to type every time. <laughs> OK, so I change only here. So now I have Q3, I have Q4, and then I have Q5, I have Q6. And Q7, Q8, Q9, Q10, Q11, Q12, Q13, Q14. Okay, so Q13, and you have Q14, Q15. Q16 and say Q17. So basically, here the values, the code that you put, we don't have to copy every time. Huh? That is the point I'm making now. Once you set it here, and this is what it is, then you copy, click on the left side, right side, you copy it, and then after that, you highlight as many as you want and you just paste it. Okay, so for example, like if, if I highlight here, you know, another five, I click on the right side, I paste it. And you can see it's already there. So I can have Q18, Q19, Q20, Q21, and Q22. So that's how we do it. Okay. So this is what is called data coding. So we have already done two steps. Eh? First step is how to open a spaces file. Uh, we open it, an empty file. And then I we have already learned how to do the coding in a spaces software. All right. Now let us click on the data view. This is variable view where I am in now, right? At the bottom, you have data view. Click on the data view now. If you click on data view, you can see your all questions are set for you to key in the data. Okay. So, for example, question one, the first respondent's question one is strongly agree, so is five. Second question, he put agree, so is four. Third question, he is neutral, so three. Four question, he strongly agree, again five. Fifth question, say, for example, he strongly disagree, so it is one. Six is disagree, so is two. So it's continuous, you know, it continues. So this is your respondent one. So you take the questionnaire, you start from the beginning, and you continue until you key in the all questions from the first respondents. That's how it is done. And when it is done, you continue to the second respondents. Then you continue to the third respondent. Say, for example, third respondent is a female, so it's two. Marital status separated, so it is three. Education, say for example, PhD, so it is four, if you remember. Employee status, full time, so it is two. Age is, uh, say for example, 
below uh, not 20, 21 to 30, so it is 2. You know, and here if the age is 60, we put 60. If the, you do not want age in a group, right? So now here again, say for example, I agree, question number one, question number two, he take neutral, question number three, he put is disagree, question number four, he put strongly agree, question number five, he says I'm agreed, you know, so it continues. So this is basically how you key in the data. So the first step is basically um, coding in a spaces, right? We put a code, numerical code on the uh, descriptive data we collect uh, and the questionnaire that uh, we see From there, we have the scales and from the scales, we'll put the numbers. So spaces can use only numbers. So we put that in a number form, okay? So that's what you have now. So um, basically, we have learned uh, um, how to codify the data, how to put the code, right? The coding in the spaces. And then also, we have learned now how to key in the data. So if you, if you move to the fourth one, say, for example, this is another respondent. And this respondent is a male, so it is one. Marital status single, so it is one. Education is diploma, so it is one. Employment is status part time, so it is two. A say for example below 20 so one and here say for example 25 and first strong uh, statement he is neutral second statement uh, he is uh, strongly agreed third statement he would disagree so two fourth statement is strongly agree five fifth uh, no fifth question he is uh, on uh, agree so it is four so this is how it goes and it will continue so you take one questionnaire and you start keying in and you finish up to the end. So that is one corresponding to the first respondents. But please follow me. Uh, we need to have ID number. Uh, the reason uh, when we continue, I will show you. Uh, when we run uh, regression, uh, we will find some multi collinearity issues are there. Uh, you will have uh, outliers issues would be there. When you have outliers, we have to drop the outliers. So there is a way of uh, taking out the outliers for that we have to create the id can you please highlight with me from the top the gender you know highlight here gender so it is already highlighted am i right so if it is highlighted then can you please go to edit and you click on insert variable insert variable so that's what I'm done. This is what I've done, right? So I go back again. This is what I have. I'm highlighting from the gender from the top. And then I go to edit. And then I will click on insert variable. So one variable is inserted. Okay, new variable inserted. So this is one column, but I have not named the variable, right? So now we are on the data view. Please click on variable view at the bottom, variable view. Okay, and here I type ID. So when I type ID, basically it's going to be ID number. Now go back to data view again. This is data view, so your ID is created. So first questionnaire, I type one. Second questionnaire, I type two. Third questionnaire, I type three. Four respondents, I put four. So I know exactly ID numbers are there. So when outliers, cases should be there. We can use that and we can check out those items from the analysis because he's an outlier. Okay, so we have to have first column ID at the beginning when you say it. Why I'm setting it now? Because it's very important. So I'm setting it at the point so that you remember that you need to have ID for every case. And also, when you are keying in the data from the questionnaire, say for example, first questionnaire said you took and you key in, you put one. Okay. Second set you take and you key in, you put two. So that in any case, you need to refer back to the questionnaire. You know which spaces one corresponds to which questionnaire exactly. Okay? All right. So now, basically, I have done with the, the first two steps. First step is data coding. We have done that. And second step was data key in, right? We now learn how to key in the data, okay? Let me now proceed to the next stage. Uh, 
when you design questionnaire, when you put uh, all question positive statements, then uh, respondents will have the mentality of always following the similar answers. You know, always put five, 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 five. We all strongly agree. <laughs> Or some four, some five, some agree, some disagree, strongly agree, some agree, some strongly agree. That kind of train is always there. So what we need to do, uh, researchers, you know, expert researchers would advise you. You need to have mixture of questionnaire. Some statements are positive and some are negative. So when he thinks the first one, is strongly agree. Second one, he looks at the questionnaire, he says, no, it cannot be agree. I disagree. So he goes to one, you know. <laughs> So one is positive, one is negative. So we need to have variations of items, the questionnaire we design so that the respondents, when he is filling in the questionnaire, he doesn't go with the same train. Huh? Uh, when you have all positive questions, I have seen many questionnaires to, you know, respondents fill in, always four or five, 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 until the end is five, you know. Or it started with four until the end, all four, <laughs> which is very bad, okay. Uh, so you will have problem on that. People will not be honest because they know all of the answers. I agree. I strongly agree. But when he puts a negative items, he has to start thinking when he fill in the questionnaire. So we have to have that kind of questions, statements in our questionnaire. Now, what happens if, uh, what happens uh, if one item on question is negative? Say, for example, question one is negative. So what we have to do now we actually can go to uh, uh, data and uh, uh, let me uh, okay you go to transform and then you click on recode into the same variable or you can recode into different variable uh, let me do it in different variable. I prefer that. Huh? We keep the original data. So click on transform and then click on record into different variable. So we click it. Huh? Now, say for example, I am taking question number two. This question, I thought it is a negative question. I know it is a negative question. Okay. So you click on Q2 and click on the arrow. It comes in the box. I'll do twice so that you remember. Now I have to change the name. So I put it as re-Q2, meaning that recoded Q2, OK? If you want to put a label, you can put a label. Huh? So if you don't want, you can don't do it. Huh? So you change it. So you can see that it is going to be changed. From Q2, it is going to be re-Q2. Uh, I will repeat the procedure one more time. Don't worry. Then you have to click on old and new values. So I click on old and new values. So my old value, if it is one, the new value would be five. Now I'm coming back from negative to the positive, you know. So one is strongly disagree and five is strongly agree. So I'm now changing. It. So two would be four. Three is three. Four is two, and five is basically one. If you look at now, the old value and new value, one, two, three, four, five, it become opposite, five, four, three, two, one. That's how we do, you know. So the negative will become positive. We purposely put negative statement, and then we make it now since to positive statements, okay? All right, let me cancel it. Huh? Let me cancel it and do it one more time so that those of you who couldn't follow me, you can follow me now, okay? So I cancel it all. So I'm going to transform, click into recode into different variable. Recode into different variable. Okay, I click that. So I'm taking question two is uh, I thought it is a, Negative question, I want to transform into a positive question. So Q2, I click here, I put it in the box. Uh, All right. 
So Q2, so name, I put it as record Q2, record Q2, all right? Uh, if you want to put the label, you can actually record it Q2, say for example, record it Q2. If you want to put label, you can, okay? You can, no problem at all. So this is what we do. We change from Q2 to record Q2, okay? And then we click on all and new values. If all value was one, this is strongly disagree, the new value would be five, I strongly agree. Then we click on add, okay? Now, all value was two, I strongly dis uh, disagree, that will become agree. So we put it four. Three neutral is still neutral, right? Neutral is always neutral, no change. Okay, so four now would become two, right? It's, it disagree become agree, so it become two. And this is five, it's strongly, this, you know, strongly agree will become strongly disagree. So that's how we change it. So you can see it's just opposite. Old value was one, two, three, four, five. New value become five, four, three, two, one. All right. So that's how it is done. So if you can now click on continue, please click on continue, and then we click OK. All right. If I click OK, actually I got a new uh, variable created. How can I see it? You scroll to the right side. You can see the re. Coded Q2 is there at the corner, right? So that's where I was, and then I am going towards the end. It is recoded, you know. This two was actually four. If you go back to Q2 here, Q2, you can see four, four, three, two. This is Q2, four, three, two, and here it become two, three, two. <laughs> so the software automatically recoded your data, recoding data, okay? Now, let me show you what happens if I do uh, recoding into the same questions. So we click on transform, please click on transform, then record into same variable, record into same variable. And then I'm doing the same question, say for example, Q2. So I put it here, Q2, and now old value and new value. So please click on old value and new value. So old value is one, new value would be opposite. Then old value and new value is four, just opposite, right? Three and it become three. Okay, then uh, four become two. And then uh, five become one. So I add it. So you can see I am converting from negative to positive. Now I click continue. And then after that, I click OK. And you can see my question two, the response has already changed. It was before four, three, four. Now it become two, three, two, automatically changed. Okay. So you can record into the same question or you can record into different questions. So that's what you say, record into same variable or record into different variable. I personally prefer recording into different variable so that my original data is still there with me. It has not changed, okay? So that's how it is, okay? Now, um, I, I can't really see your questions there, so it's fine. Uh, later on, I will take questions from you. Uh, from the screen. Let me just follow. So what we have done now, we have learned basically how to code the data, right, using spaces in spaces. Number two, we have learned how to key in the data. And number three, we have learned how to record the data, okay? So we have done the three stages now. All right, uh, with that, I have to close this file and then, um, I will bring you to an uh, original data. That's where we'll be learning. All right. So you can see those of you who do not have SPSS, uh, you can you can uh, basically 
just wait eh? i'm opening in that, that that original data now give me a minute the solo eh? i'm opening the new data so once i open the data i'm going to can you open the data the data that we have shared with you uh miss sonia has emailed you the data if you have received it open it in your computer if you didn't receive you can download it from our youtube channel where you are watching now under the channel in the chat box in the chat box we have given the data you can download it and follow me now okay all right um let me now share the screen with you uh, Okay, let me share the new data. Okay. All right, uh, I'm waiting for, for you to see the screen, uh, my screen to be shared with you. Huh? Take some time to share the screen. Why that one is there? Okay. All right. You can see that's how we have keyed in the data. We have the ID, and then we have all demography. And uh, finally, uh, you can see all those uh, variables are there. All those questions are there. Okay. So, all those questions are there. All right. So this is how it is, okay? So this is a, a real PhD data, uh, but not the full data. <laughs> I cannot run the, this is just for practice. Huh? Uh, I have only few data uh, just to show you how we do it. Now, can you click on variable view? Uh, I personally wanted uh, you to have a feeling of uh, seeing how uh, the PhD data looks like once you key in and then how you play with that, okay? So this is how we did, right? Uh, this is when you code the data. You can see ID is there and the use of internet, you know? So he put the questions here. Uh, he asked the student, no, respondents. So it's basically yes or no. So he has said it there. Age yes of the respondents, he has ranges there. He has put it there. Uh, gender is there. Uh, year of use, how many years he used uh, internet. Uh, so it's blank. You can see hours of working with you know with internet that is also empty uh, kept empty for them to fill up all right and next you can see for example like the dependent independent variable uh, he has this strongly disagree disagree neutral agree and this strongly agree huh? these skills are there so we have learned that how to set the screen for you to be able to key in the data all right remember as i said at the beginning this is a very introductory level uh, those who have not they have never exposed to SPSS, uh, first time learning for you. Uh, so those of you who have learned SPSS before today's session could be a bit boring, but could be refreshing for you, all right? So you have to be uh, be patient uh, to learn, learn something new uh, in the next few sessions, all right? So this is how it is. So we have kid in the data. So now I'm assuming, I'm assuming uh, or making assumption that uh, we have already designed questionnaire, we have collected the data, and we have already keyed in the data. So the data is in front of me. Now I am ready to start analyzing the data. Okay. All right. Um, before that, let me clarify also one more point, uh, which is very important. Uh, in one variable, if you have five scale, can you have seven scale in another variable? 
say for example one of your variable is employee um, growth growth opportunities and you have five questions and you have used the scale is strongly disagree disagree neutral agree and strongly agree and then you have another variable that is salary and your scale is seven not five can we do that not advisable not advisable uh, so the scale if it is one to five you need to maintain the scale one to five you should not have more than five scale or less than five scale but the kind of scale could be different you know uh, you may have strongly disagree disagree neutral agree and strongly agree in another scale you can have most frequently frequently less frequently you know all that five scale can or you can have excellent very good you know then uh, good fair and poor still you have five scale so as long as the number of scale is similar there is no problem different variable you can have different way of scaling but the number of scale has to be the similar huh? otherwise sometime you may run into serious problem when you test hypothesis all right uh, let me move on to uh, testing uh, reliability or possibly let me run the descriptive first uh, later i will explain and let you know which one should be run first since it is a preliminary session introductory session so let me run the descriptive analysis first so now all the statistical tests are available here under the analyze everything there you can see descriptive there compare means where the test of differences is available general uh, linear model mixed model correlation regression log linear and uh, dimension reduction which is factor analysis scale which is reliability and all that you know non parametric test everything is available here under the analyze once your data is um, is you put the code and you enter the data after that this is where you will start actually running you know analyzing your data so if you want to run descriptive analysis then you have to go to analyze then click on descriptive statistics so please follow me descriptive statistics and then go to frequencies descriptive statistics then frequencies okay i take only those i uh, you know want to analyze so in descriptive analysis basically if you have continuous data you don't have to have that only categorical one huh? so let me put all of that here see for example from here until uh, until the first question on a variable until marital status first one is id you don't have to take it from the next one until the marital status and then i put it in the box okay so i cancel it again i do it again for you to follow me so you click on descriptive statistics click on frequencies take all those descriptive questions until marital for this student until marital so you put it in the box then you go to statistics please click on statistics and basically we will need the mean and standard deviation enough you do not need anything more from here just mean and standard deviation eh? mean and standard deviation should be enough so i click continue and actually i can click on charts I can see it again after statistics I click on charts on the right side here box I click on charts you may choose pie chart you can choose by chart bar chart or you can choose choose histograms so if you want to choose different charts for different descriptive analysis then you have to put one by one you cannot put all together so here if I choose by pie chart meaning is going to be all pie chart you know so i click continue and then i click okay and you can see in the output you can see in the output here it has given you know the person is for each one so now you can see gender how many gender there male is 167 female 196 and the percentage is there so this is your frequency right this is your frequency 
this is your frequency and the top it has given you the mean and standard deviation okay so gender you cannot have mean right is male and female but here because you run it so it gives you 1.53 it doesn't give you any meaning right so you have to understand uh, the software we call it garbage in garbage out whatever you put in the software will run it for you <laughs> so you have to know which one you want to calculate the mean and standard deviation and you can see the software is amazing so fast within few seconds it analyzes and gives you everything okay and if i go down you scroll down you can see the pie chart is there this is all pie chart is being done uh, this is male female and all that so all of them are given at the back right okay so i um, minimize this one and go back to data again now let me show you if you want different bar or different graph at different times so i go to analyze go to descriptive statistics i go to frequency i reset i reset again okay so now for age just for age so for example i run i want mean standard deviation that's the only two that we always ask for i continue i go to charts and i choose here bar chart okay so frequency is enough i don't need percentage so i click continue and then i click okay and if you go down here in the output given you can see the mean is given standard deviation is given and this is the age of respondent because his age is continuous but still you can see most of the respondents belongs to 24 25 and 26 this category okay so from here actually you can also run the statistics you don't have to go back to the data you can click analyze here you can go to descriptive statistics then frequencies then i take out the age and say for example i put current position my current job position i put it in and statistics the mean and standard deviation there and charts i want a pie chart here so i click continue i click ok you can see the pie chart is there so if you want to present different descriptive variable in different way either bar chart or histogram or pie chart then you have to run one by one you cannot put all in one you can't okay all right so this is how we will run descriptive statistics all right so what you need is basically mean and standard deviation and after that uh, you would need uh, the graphs which can be created easily all right let us now click on um, analyze again and then i go to descriptive statistics and then i click on frequencies okay and then i double click it goes out now this is the first variable okay this is the first variable so i can take the first variable five question usefulness okay usefulness so i put it inside the box and i can actually take the mean and standard deviation graph i do not want anything none okay i want none no graph so i continue and if i click you can see you have some very important data you know so the first statement on usefulness you know what statement you have in the questionnaire so here you can see strongly agree 258 agree 95 these agree only very few okay in compared to the next question uh, you can see here neutral a lot 53 earlier question neutral only uh, 30 you know so question by question it gives you the mean and standard deviation uh, so from there in fact that's what how we multiply our research papers from a research being conducted you can easily run a paper looking at the you know responses from respondents how many agree how many disagree and looking at the mean and standard deviation you can also write conference papers which would be easier okay so we can do that also every question 
we can run separately and we can analyze question by question if you want to. If you are doing a descriptive study, then this is what is important. Even qualitative study, this is what is very important. If you are doing interview and you put some very structured questions, then you can key in in the spaces by creating the code as I taught you before. And you can run the descriptive statistics and you can show it this way, right? How many say yes, how many say no. If say no, why? If say yes, why? You know, those sort of things can be also run by this descriptive statistics, okay? So this is very simple. We go to descriptive statistics, we go to frequency, okay? So for this moment, uh, we keep up to that. Huh? We keep up to that. But let me show you one more, a very beautiful one, which gives you a lot of data to talk about, cost tab, okay? So I go again, we go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and cross tab. Can you please click on cost tab with me, cross tab. This is what we have. Huh? So now, I want to see uh, in terms of position. So I put it in a row. And uh, category of organization, I put it in the column. Are you following me? Hopefully you're following me. Huh? So I reset again. I cancel it. So I'm going to analyze descriptive statistics. I'm going to cross tab. Then I'm putting current position in the row and category of organization. I put it in the column. All right. And then click on statistics. I can choose chi square, which I will explain later in another workshop. Don't worry. Uh, temporarily, just leave it like that, or even click on uh, correlation also. Okay, so with these two, I uh, click continue. Or uh, I can also ask for lambda since I'm running chi square. Don't worry, this all will be explained slowly. Don't worry, huh? it's the first day. So with that, I just click OK. Format ascending is uh, there. You can click is ascending automatically there. So I can click on OK. Now this. This is amazing. This data is amazing. You can see now. If you see my screen here, you see top manager, wholesale retailer, six. Top manager from those respondents are their services from those three. Manufacturing only one. Those are in the middle level for wholesaler, there are five. Services, there were 35. So at the end, you can see those fill in the questionnaire. There were 31 top managers. Um, what is screen? Run it again. Key paper. I don't can I continue? Can 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 you see? What there is a problem? Is the screen running again? Is it? What was here in my? Okay. No, I think uh, there is a problem. Okay, hold on, eh? please. Uh, I'm not sure whether there is a problem. Okay. Can you see the screen? Uh, can I? Eh? Okay, okay, okay. Then I continue. Uh, okay, okay, now it's all right. Okay. So uh, the one I was saying was cost tab, right? Uh, was 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 very good one to see. Um, this is where we are looking at, right? So the total, uh, 363 people have filled in the questionnaire. Out of them, 31 was uh, from current, you know, top position, top managers. 129 was from middle level manager. 58 from lower manager. Admin support was 25. Technical position was 70. 
So that's what you see, right? And from this, this cross tab even will show you a category of organization also, you know, from where these top managers coming from, where these uh, middle managers coming from, okay? So that can be also run. Looking at this table alone, you can actually write a conference paper, you know. <laughs> you can. And uh, when you attach this, okay, let me show you one more. Uh, cost tab. You go to analyze, click on descriptive. We go to cross tab, and I drop this, right? I drop this first. Okay. Let's for, see, for example, I put, uh, uh, okay, current position again in the row. And the first question, usefulness, I put it in the column. And I click OK. Then this one, you can see top manager out of 31, 25 say strongly agree, 5 say agree, 1 only say disagree. But if you look at admin support, out of 50, 32 say strongly agree, 15 or agree, and neutral was 2 and 1 was disagree. So even every questions, you know, every questions, if you want to analyze, especially participants who would like to do qualitative study, you collect the data, and then later you have to describe, that also can be done in SPSS. That's one of the misunderstandings that many researchers has. You know, we always feel SPSS is only for quantitative data. Of course, data has to be con converted into quantitative. But even the qualitative data can be used in SPSS and you can uh, find a lot of beautiful findings, you know, using SPSS. So what I have done so far is, uh, first of all, I have started with uh, how to code the data. Uh, we have done that. And then uh, after that, uh, we learn how to key in the data. And then after that, we learn how to recode the data. And then finally, we have learned how to basically uh, run the descriptive analysis, OK? All right. So for today's session, I have two more steps to complete, OK? Hopefully, you will be uh, patient enough to follow me. Huh? Uh, let me run the reliability test first uh, before converting item into variable, OK? Now, why reliability first? Because when you run reliability, uh, we may have to drop certain items. If you drop items, that items are not going to be used anymore. So we will not use that item anymore when you convert items into variable. Okay. Now, let me remind you, uh, there will be a feedback form uh, online here. You have to fill up the feedback form if you want to get uh, a certificate, e-certificate for participation. Okay. Please make sure later you fill in. Not now. Uh, I want you to con con you know, concentrate on the session now. Okay, let's continue to run reliability test. So click on analyze, click on analyze, then click on scale. Please follow me. You can see the YOLO highlights there, analyze and scale, then you have reliability. So click on reliability analysis, analyze, scale, reliability. So that's how we test reliability. Okay, I'll tell you what this test means. Huh? This is reliability. Reliability test is not done on descriptive uh, data. It's not. We don't. Uh, not necessary. Uh, if you do it, it's completely wrong. So reliability test is done based on variable, variable by variable. Now, I have seen, you know, undergraduate student thesis, they put all data together, all independent, dependent, whatever, all data together, and they run the reliability, which is wrong. Reliability got to be run variable by variable, okay? So we have to test the stability of the data within the variable. Huh? We call it reliability analysis basically is a test of internal consistency and stability of the data. That's what you look at, huh? stability and internal consistency. So this data, this is a variable usefulness. So I choose all five, all four, huh? there are four questions here. So four questions, usefulness, I put it inside here. Can you do it, please? So I highlighted usefulness, four items, I put it inside the box. Okay, after that, I click on statistics. 
please click on statistics. I will cancel and run it one more time. For that, you can follow me. Huh? So you click on item. Not all item we click. Huh? Item. Scale. If item deleted, you can see which one I'm clicking. And then inter item correlation. That's it. We do not need anything more than that. This three is enough. So we click now continuous. And then we click OK. And then you can see here the reliability is given. Conrec Alpha 0.819. Okay. So let me run one more time so that everyone can follow me. So I go to analyze. I go to scale. I go to reliability analysis. Then I reset. So make it zero. Okay. <laughs> so I'm choosing this question. So usefulness. This is a variable. I'm taking all the items under usefulness. I put it inside. Then I click on the statistics. I click on items. If item deleted and inter item correlation. That's the three items I'm asking you to click. And then you click on continue. And then you click OK. You can see your Convec Alpha is there, 0.819. Okay. Now, um, for you, I believe for those of you who are sitting with me are uh, basically a uh, starter. You know, you, you are just beginning uh, to learn. Uh, so you have to read a paper, Nulali, N-U-N-A-L-L-Y, Nulali. Yeah? Uh, that paper is a must-read paper to understand reliability, you know, internal consistency and stability test. Now, if you scroll down, this is what I wanted to refer. If you look at it, inter item, inter total, item total statistics, convex alpha here, if item deleted. This meaning that if you delete usefulness one, your reliability would be 0 0.777, but your convex alpha is already 0 0.819, so it's already high. So if you look at here, if you drop any item, let us drop one. Huh? So now your convex alpha is 0.819. Now I want to drop four. So for example, analyze scale. I go to reliability. I drop item number four. So I click and I drop. And then I run it. You can see it's become 0.786. OK. That's what it said. It says if you drop question four, your reliability would be 0.786. So that's how we do, you know. Um, as, as we go on, because I'll be having a few more sessions, I'll give you a data whereby reliability will be very low. And then we'll keep dropping the item to make sure that reliability is acceptable. It has to be more than 0.7 at least. Huh? For PhD, is more than 0.8. Now, I go again, you know, we test another variable, scale. I go to reliability. Then I take out all this. And uh, next variable is basically the ease of use. So I go to ease of use. I choose the four items that this researcher has. I put it in here. Okay. So once I put it there, statistics that the one I have chosen is already there. I say I click continue, and then I click OK. All right. So I click OK. You can see here the convex alpha is 0 0.886. So it's a good data. So, all right, 886. So that's the highest convex alpha that we can have. Huh? So let us run one more. Uh, we go to scale, reliability. Okay, uh, let me cancel it. I go back to the data. And what I do, I change some data so that there will be some problem. Huh? So, so I put, say, for example, one, 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 one. So I put here also uh, one, 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 one. Huh? I'm changing some data to, to, to create problem huh? so that you see how it is being tackled.
Okay, attitude one, two, three. Let me run reliability. Okay, now. So I go here, I reset, and then I take attitude. Attitude. Glow down is here. You can see attitude. Attitude one, two, three. So I have these three questions. So I put that in. And then I go to statistics. I go to item. Scale if item deleted. Inter item correlation, right? That's the three we need. So I then click continue. And then I click OK. All right. Now you can see here your convex alpha is 861. OK, 861. Uh, OK, so still uh, the convex alpha is very high. Let me change the data is still a bit bit more. Huh? Attitude 1, so I change more. Just to show you how it affects. Okay. Okay. Let me go and run it again. So you go to scale, reliability, and you know, attitude all are inside there. So I just click OK. You can see now the reliability already dropped. Already dropped. Earlier reliability was, you can see here, 861. Just before you run. With the little changes of data, the reliability becomes 750. So now, this is beautiful. This is what I want. This is what I want to show you. Now look at the screen now. Your convex alpha is here, 750. This is what is it. Huh? You can see here. Convex alpha is 750. 750. I want to make it 8. How can I do that? So look at now this one. This one basically, if you look at the last column, it says convex alpha if item is deleted. Meaning if we delete item number 1, your convex alpha is going to be 0.865. So my original convex alpha here is 750. So if I drop item number one, it's going to be 0.865. So what I do now, I go to analyze, scale, reliability, I drop number one. I drop number one. Remember earlier now, our convex alpha is 0 0.750. If I drop one now, it's supposed to be 0 0.865. So you can see now it's 0 0.865. So now we have only two items. We don't have three items, you know. So we drop attitude one. So to measure the attitude, we have three items. Now, because of reliability is low, to make convex alpha acceptable, we decided to drop convex attitude number one. So we have now two items only. In the questionnaire, we have three items. But now for analysis, for further analysis from now onwards, we will have only two items. We don't have three items already. <laughs> okay? So that's how we increase convex alpha. I hope you understood it. Huh? So the video will be available in YouTube. And you can, you can watch one more time and you can learn more. Okay? All right. If you are okay with that, now I would like to proceed to the next stage. So what we have done so far, we have learned how to code the data for spaces. Number two, we have learned how to key in the data. Number three, we have learned how to recode the data. Then number four, we have learned how to run descriptive statistics. And number five, we have learned how to run reliability analysis. Now, please remember reliability analysis has to be done for every variable separately. If you have three independent variables, you have to run for three times. Then moderating, if you have one time. If you have mediating, you have all mediating together. And for dependent, you have to run together. Dependent, you have to run together. Okay. Now, what happens if under the dependent variable you have few dimensions? So in that question, I will only cover during the factor analysis when you run the factor analysis. A bit advanced level. So today I would like to cover only the preliminary introductory. Uh, level for you. Okay. Now let us move on to the next level. 
the last stage for today's uh, webinar. Okay, for today is the last stage. Uh, as I plan to do four, and I do not want to create a situation whereby I give you too many things and you forget. Okay. Personally, I said my objective is to make sure whoever attend the workshop will end up learning the SPSS, will be comfortable and confident to complete his PhD up to PhD study. Okay. So we move on to the last stage. Uh, Transforming items into variable. Huh? Items are basically we mean, we, we mean the question statements that we have. Every statement that you have, every question that we have, we mention as yes, item, huh? item. So if you have, say, for example, four items in one variable, so now that is what you have. If you look at the question eh? here in the data, usefulness. If you look at the top here, as you follow my cursor, is one, two, is fullness three, is fullness four. So you have four questions to measure is fullness. So what do we have now? Four items. But when we run statistics or hypothesis, we have to run based on variable. So now we have to create the variable. We have to create the variable. So we are going to now transform the items into a variable. Okay. So I go to analyze. Not analyze. We're going to transform. We go to transform, then we click on compute variable. Are you following me? Transform, compute variable. So I click compute variable. Target variable. So here you have to name that name of the variable. Okay. So in this case, this data is usefulness. Okay. So I put a name. And here you have to follow. You know how we do it. Uh, please follow me now closely. Eh? So this is what you have. And then here you have another box. On the right side, name it as function group. Function group. Eh? So click all. Click all from the function group. Here, click. So if you click all, then another box appears at the bottom. So from bottom, you have to choose the mean. M-E-A-N. So that's what I'm looking for, mean. So I have it here, mean. So I double click the mean, double click. It will go upwards, right? It's, it's go to the upper box. I will do one more. So if you cannot follow the first time, next time you will follow, inshallah. Don't worry. So what I do first, once I get the mean here, I delete everything inside. I just keep the bracket. And then I double click, double click the usefulness. Double click usefulness, comma. You have to put a comma manually. Then double click useful two. You have to put a comma. Double click useful three. You put a comma. And double click usefulness four. So you don't have anything in the bracket before usefulness and after usefulness four. You know? It's only those questions. So I reset again. And we do it again. Okay. I reset. I cancel it. So you go to transform, go to compute variable, target variable, we write the name. Okay, and then we go to under the function group, we click on all, then we see many things comes at the bottom of it below this, and we look for mean. So we click on mean and we double click the mean, double click, M A N, M E A N. Okay, the mean is there. So inside you have two question mark and comma, you delete it. It is there. And now you go to the letter left side box and you choose the items that you would like to convert. So under usefulness, we have three, four question items. So you double click, double click usefulness will come in. Or you highlight and you put the arrow also will come in. So after putting the first one, you have to put a comma. After putting the first one, you have to put a comma. Manually, then I highlight the second one. I can click on arrow, it comes here. Then I have to put arrow, comma again. Number three, I put it inside, I put comma again, and then number four, I put afterwards. So that's what you have to do. So once you are done with that, please click OK now. Click OK. So let me show you what happens. Be here on the data view. On the data view, you scroll with me towards the right. 
you can see usefulness a variable is being created scroll to the right and you can see the usefulness a variable has been created so the item that we have three items usefulness one two three four four items we converted the four items into one variable that is usefulness that's what we need you know if you want to run one way ANOVA, TTS, uh, correlation, regression, uh, you need a variable. To test the hypothesis, you need the variable, okay? So that's the variable you have. So let us do one more. Let us do one more. Huh? So please follow me now. Click on transform, compute variable, and then inside the main, we delete that, okay? And useful, you have to change the name, right? So next variable is ease of use. So we write ease of use. And here you have to follow the same, right? So you already have that mean. So we click is ease of use. Number one, we put it in, comma, ease of use two, put, put comma, ease of three, put comma, and then we put four in. So once we have that, you click. Okay, we click OK. So it says you have illegal character. You cannot do it. You know why? Because ease of use cannot be written like that. It doesn't allow. So what you can do is we put ease underscore use. Ease underscore use. Later I will show you how to label it. So I put it as ease underscore use because you cannot put any hyphen. Or you cannot keep an empty space in between the words. Okay. So I click OK now. All right. So you minimize it and you can see ease of use. Another variable has been created. All right. Okay. Now, what you have to remember is uh, basically, uh, once you have the data, uh, we put the code and then we key in. And then after that, we'll be running factor analysis first uh, to test the validity. Then we'll run reliability. Once validity test is done properly, dropping those items are not necessary. Reliability will be automatically high, you know, when you run reliability. So factor analysis will help you, uh, you know, to identify the dimension, the variables that we have in the research. So that one I will do at the thir third workshop, uh, third workshop. That will take long time. I think three hours just to run factor analysis, <laughs> okay? Uh, so based on the factor analysis, you may drop certain item. And then you come back to reliability, you might further drop items. So when you convert variable from items, those items drop during the factor and reliability. Those items will not be used anymore in converting items into variable, huh? transforming items into variable. We will only use those items give you higher reliability and acceptable validity. We'll only use those items. Uh, as I'm saying that, you should not be worried. Uh, I will give you another data set whereby the data quality will be very poor. So next session, I'm going to run it and show you how to drop those data and how to keep you know those items remain and then we transform them into variable okay now um, let us do one more you go to transform compute variable i'm going to reset it so that you remember i reset it and i cancel it so you go to transform compute variable target variable huh? target variable here say for example he has uh, attitude. Attitude, okay? Now, we have to go here, right? Under the function all, and then bottom, you will see the one called mean. We are looking for mean, right? M-E-A-N. So we double click. So it goes inside. We have to delete everything right from inside and attitude. Remember, attitude when you run reliability, we drop attitude number one. So we cannot take any more. That item is already dropped. 
So we take attitude two and attitude three. Only two. So this is student, particular student, has actually three items to measure attitude. Attitude one, attitude two, attitude three. But because of the reliability was low, so we had to drop attitude number one. So we dropped it. So we can now use only attitude two and attitude three. Now, please remember, to create a variable, you need to have minimum two items, minimum two items. You cannot have one item. If one item, it becomes categorical. So you cannot run parametric statistical tests. So you'll have problems. So you need to have minimum two. And that's why, personally, I will always advise you should have at least five items. Because certain cases, you may have to drop three. If you drop three, you still you have two. Minimum two is required. <laughs> if you drop two, you have three. This is good. And if you out of five, if you drop one, you still have four. So minimum number of items required to run the statistics is two. So two items are essential, compulsory for you to have. So when you are dropping items, you cannot drop until point when it becomes less than two. Huh? You have to have minimum two. So attitude one, we drop. So we have attitude two and three. So we click OK. So if you minimize this, you can see attitude, another variable created. So that's how we transform items into variable. So in a framework, uh, my next session, I'm going to run the data together with the theoretical framework and hypothesis so that you can see how hypothesis are tested. OK, so if you have three independent variables, say, for example, these three and one dependent variable, so you will have four variables being created. So all the question earlier, you see, basically, these all are items. These all are items. These items are OK, because that's the data you have collected. But from the item, you have to measure a variable, right? So if you have a dependent variable and you have 10 questions, so those 10 items are basically measuring your dependent variable. So you have to combine the 10. You have to combine the 10 to make it the dependent variable. Or say, for example, you have five items to measure an independent variable. So you have to combine the five items together to make it a variable. And that's what we have done now. OK? So that's to recap again uh, what we have done today. We started with a very little introduction of spaces. I thought I shouldn't be talking a lot. So we have done that. And then after that, we started with how to open the spaces uh, from the software. Number two, we have learned how to um, do the coding uh, in SPSS. Once coding is done, then we have learned how to key in the data. And then in case in your questionnaire, you have some negative items, then we have to recode the data. So I have also shown you how can you record the data into same variable, or you can record into different variables. Okay, I have shown you that. And followed by, uh, we learned how to uh, run the descriptive analysis. I've shown you how can you get mean and uh, standard deviation as well as the graph available, either bar chart or pie chart or histogram. You can do all those available in SPSS, can be presented in the research findings. I have also shown you each item that you have under variable, you strongly agree and disagree up to that. That also can be run in descriptive statistics and some useful findings can be gathered from there and can be reported. All right. And then after that, we proceed uh, to uh, run the reliability. And I've shown you how we run the reliability test. The point that you must remember, uh, the reliability test uh, got to be done based on variable by variable. Every independent, moderating, mediating, dependent, all will be run separately, all right, separately. And minimum acceptance level for PhD is definitely 0.8 and above, 0.7 and above, we do accept. But you have to learn, you have to read the paper, Vitamin Nalili, Nalili, N U N A L L Y, Nalili. His paper must be read to understand the reliability test and all that. So, reliability test is known as uh, the test of internal consistency and stability of data. So, please read Nalili and understand more. And then, followed by finally, what we have done today, uh, we have learned how to transform items into variable. So, we have many items to measure a variable. Sometimes, I have seen in a questionnaire a dependent variable uh, is being measured by using 25 items, meaning you have 25 questions to measure a dependent variable. 
So if you run factor and reliability and this 20 still stands or 25 stands, then you have to convert this 20 into one variable. So we have learned that today also. Okay. So uh, for today's session, since uh, an introductory session, uh, I would like to keep up to that. Um, uh, I will uh, uh, stop presenting and then uh, uh, I'll stop the screen. And then, uh, okay. Uh, I will pass it to Miss Sonia if there were some questions. Huh? Uh, I, I must tell you this. Uh, basically, my computer is giving problem. Uh, the spaces get uh, uh, hanged. <laughs> so I'm using one of my students' computer and his computer. The camera is beat up. So it looks like I'm looking up. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, can I pass it to Sonia now, Miss Sonia? I pass it to you. I'm, I'm sure that you have seen uh, the question being uh, written on the uh, chat box. So maybe you can uh, raise some of these questions and I'll try to handle it. And those of you who are still with me, uh, just to inform you, we will soon have the second session. Second session will be very important. We'll be looking at testing the differences and testing of similarities and some other. Followed by, we'll do a, uh, another session just on uh, factor analysis. And then followed by the final session would be the most important one, testing the hypothesis. So you will learn uh, simple regression, multiple regression, hierarchical regression, all those advanced level complex tests will be done to test hypothesis. That will be the final session. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, Zahid Muhammad has given a Nanali's paper uh, reference in the chat box. You can see uh, Nanali JC 1978. Uh, that, that paper should be should be read. Everything should everyone everyone should read that paper. Huh? Thank you, uh, Muhammad Zahid Muhammad. Okay. Um, Sonia, are you there online? Hi, Sonia. Oh, we have to add on. Hi, Sonia, are you there? Uh, shall we call her? I call her. Uh, Sonia. What happened to Sonia? Hi, Sonia. Are you there? Uh, hello, Prof. Yes, Prof. Yes. I am. Okay. Did you did you copy the question or are you also practicing so you couldn't really see the questions, is it? I see there's a question. Is it possible to use a species for forecasting? Uh, definitely yes. Uh, definitely yes. All right. Uh, today is a very introductory session. So participants, those of you who are participating with me, you have to understand. It's a very introductory session. Uh, so basically I try to uh, I try to just help you uh, to start with. <laughs> uh, Charlene Lin is asking whether there is any WhatsApp group. There is a WhatsApp group. Uh, Ms. Sonia, can you share it in the chat box? The link to join in the WhatsApp group? Ms. Sonia? Hello? Yeah, Sonia, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Pa. Uh, can you, uh, can yes, you add? I am can you add the uh, WhatsApp link uh, in the chat box so that? Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Nanali, definitely Nanali has to be uh, cited in all reliability tests, huh? all PhD, masters, or any research you do. If you are using uh, collinear, sorry, uh, convex alpha as a measure to test the reliability, then definitely you have to cite Nanali. Uh, there are a few more uh, references there also available. Um, Ms. Sonia, is there any important question? Uh, yes, Pop. Okay. I'm, I, I'm just uh, saying the chat box. Yes, Pop. Okay. Yes, Pop. I I'm here. OK. Someone has asked question, Can how to transfer questionnaire from Google form to SPSS? From Google form to SPSS, you can. <laughs> uh, from Google form, actually, you can copy, and then you can paste it in SPSS. It's possible. Uh, but after pasting it, then you have to codify. You have to do the coding. Uh, you have to do the coding. Okay. Can, uh, can. Sir, we, yes. Prof, we have one question regarding mm -hmm. the factor score analysis. 
Factor analysis, I said, basically, uh, we will do it uh, uh, possibly on the third session. Third session would be completely uh, dedicated for factor analysis. Hello. Uh, the data that I have shared with you, uh, you can you can use it for learning purposes. Huh? Use it for learning purpose. Can you transform yes or no item into variable? Oh, uh, no, you, you, you can't. You can You need to have a scale. Huh? If you put yes or no, it's basically uh, a categorical data. It becomes categorical. Uh, you need to have uh, the scale, like the one I have shown you. From strongly disagree until strongly agree. Or you can have like uh, excellent, very good, fair, poor, all that. Huh? You need to have a scale to convert into variable. From yes, no, you do not really get a lot of data. So there's no point of converting this into variable. Uh, Ms. Sonia, can you share the WhatsApp group link here in the chat box? Uh, sure, Prof. Uh, sorry, my data bit, my data yeah, bit. Many of, yeah, many of them asking for it. Many of them asking for it. WhatsApp group link. Yes, How uh, to yes, transfer Prof. data from Excel file into SPSS? Uh, from Excel, you can definitely uh, export it to SPSS. Or you can just copy and then you paste it in SPSS. All right, no problem at all. Can SPSS run second order construct? Yes, definitely. Uh, that one would be hierarchical regression. You have to wait for another two sessions. Huh? We'll do it in the fourth session. Uh, when PLS was not there, we still run higher order construct also, right? <laughs> the hierarchical regression, we used to call it the stepwise regression. We'll run that. Okay, we'll run that. Uh, yes, we do. With, with regards to the computer variable part, Prof, I already shared the variable. WhatsApp group link in the chat box. Okay, uh, it's not there yet, I think. Can you pin it so that it goes up? Ah, uh, Prof, I think I cannot pin. I see. I think then your comment will come. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. Prof, I can I can send you in the chat box here. You can send to. You can highlight. Yeah, I, I don't see yet. It's not there yet. Prof, I already sent in the stream yard. Our... Oh, you put it in the stream yard. Yes, Prof. And also I put it in the chat box. In the then why is YouTube it's not coming? Why is not coming? So yeah. Is it there? Yes, Prof. I already sent. Uh, uh, Ms. Sonia, can you share the feedback form? Those uh, those people want the certificate, they can fill in now. Prof, I already sent. I don't know why they cannot see. Actually, sometimes the YouTube have the problem. They cannot see continuously the link. Oh, you are uh, sitting, you are sending in the private chat. That's why. Yes, yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. You, you put it in the private chat. You don't have to. You have to put it in the comments. Uh, I already no no I already put in the main comment box. Prof, you can highlight it again from the your channel, the Google form yeah. link, so they can click on that. Uh, it is in the private see, chat. I'm not sure Prof, how to. I already. Copy it. Uh, yeah, I already sent uh, many times uh, feedback link in the chat box, in the live chat box. I don't know why they are not get. Now they because they are only seek and you. I mean, okay, we, 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 we start to join. It is scrolling yes. down now. It's, can you see? It? Okay, now it's scrolling. Yeah. Yes, okay. Now they already. This is the joined. WhatsApp. Hey. Okay, now we have put uh, in the. You can see in the chat box. Uh, we put the WhatsApp link. And uh, feedback from this. One, this, one, this one. Yes, Bob, yes. also feedback from. Okay, we, we copied and pasted there also. Okay. Copy. Uh, yes, sure. Bob. Okay, uh, you can see under the name of platform for research and development, uh, we just uh, put yes, the feedback form. This is the feedback form. Huh? 
this is the feedback form. You can see it there. From the chat box, you can click and you can fill in. Certificates are auto-generated. Certificate auto-generated. Huh? So automatically we get the certificate. This is the feedback form. It's already there in the chat box. Please, for those of you who are asking for it, it's there. Uh, Dr. Rula is asking for another session on PLS. Uh, PLS will be later. On SPSS, we will have four sessions, four sessions just on SPSS. So first of all, I would like to make you uh, expert in SPSS. Then follow on, we will go to PLS. Don't worry. Uh, we'll do step by step. Huh? So keep on uh, following uh, me and uh, my channel. Uh, then we can okay. Okay, uh, we have given you the WhatsApp link and also we have given you the feedback form. Please feed, fill in the feedback form in order to get the search. It's auto generated. If you fill in, automatically certificate will be given to you. Sometime email could be in your junk box. Please make, make sure you check the junk box. Okay. Okay, somebody's asking what is about the form to fill in. The form fill in is basically if you fill in, you will get the cert. You will get the certificate. Each certificate will be given to you. If you do not fill in the feedback form, you will not get the certificate. Uh, in terms of registration, uh, there were 800 plus students registered. But you can see in the session live was about 400. So mm -hmm. we cannot give certificate for just filling in the registration form. So we'll only give to the participants who have attended the session. Okay. So as I see, I think about 400 people attended. Uh, brother, brother, Masu, can you put it again? They said they cannot see the link. Can you copy and paste it? Oh, okay. You can see on the on the screen is the. You can just scroll up. Actually, you can see. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, okay. We, we upload again. This is the ch WhatsApp chat group. If you want to join, click there and you join the WhatsApp chat group. Okay, and then uh, then again we give you the copy. At this okay, uh, we have given you just a feedback from uh, the follow this form. This one. This one is already there in the chat box. You say you cannot see the feedback form. Can you see it now? Platform for research and development. We have given you the feedback form. Please fill in the feedback form. All right. So please make sure you fill up the feedback form if you really want to get a certificate. Uh, you will soon get the announcement of the second session. Uh, Ms. Sonia and the group, uh, we will, uh, you know, we will basically uh, let you know soon when you are going to have the second session. And uh, those of you who have registered, uh, possibly for next session, we will not ask you to register anymore. Uh, you will just come and uh, join the session. We'll share the link with you. Okay, is that okay, Ms. Sonia? Uh, yes, Prof. It will be okay because uh, many participants uh, actually the some people uh, the some participants joined the newly, so that's why they didn't get the data. Uh, so that's uh, why I think the next time we can uh, give them directly the link so they can uh, uh, join our session without to sending uh, them. The actually, the data actually the data is uploaded. Actually, data is uploaded here. If they but check Prof, the check the comment they, box. Yes, Prof, but they cannot see. That's the problem. I, don't I know. see. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, Prof. 
Yeah. And now, now we already highlighted everything, but still uh, the, they are asking link share, link share. So, but next mm. time uh, I think we can improve uh, more regarding the uh, session, maybe the platform. Okay, okay. Charlie uh, Ling, uh, your, your question is what do I do if I click OK, it shows incorrect variable name. Yeah, because the variable name, uh, you have to change it. It has to be one, one word, one word, or you can put uh, not hyphen, you can put what you call underline, not underline, what do you call that? Uh, or you put the short, short name, you know, any short form in one word, in one word. So, for example, ease of use, you do not put any space, just write ease of use. That's it. Or you just write ease, you know, then you run again, it should be all right. Uh, the session that we are running, uh, Muhammad Nadim Azizi, uh, we write at the same time if it's okay with you. Huh? If it's okay with you. Uh, uh, somebody asking, uh, the, I think 3.30 to 5.30, that's the time we'll do it. Uh, somebody is asking a question, why should we code neutral as 3, not at 1? <laughs> uh, neutral is, is more not positive, not negative, so it has to be in the between. So if we use, we start with it's not only disagree, then neutral has to come in between disagree and agree. That's why you put it three, not one. Huh? Okay. Uh, Sam Amos, not now, not now, not now. Slowly. Uh, we learn spaces first. <laughs> okay, we learn spaces first, uh, then uh, we will learn stata and then followed by PLS, then possibly Amos. We cannot be running all in one shot. Huh? Okay, uh, I think they are now filling up the, uh, the form. Miss Sonia, they are saying they are filling up the form. Uh, so fill in the form uh, before you leave the session. And uh, automatically the certificate will be uh, sent to your email. It's auto-generated. If you fill in now, you should be receiving the certificate now. Huh? <laughs> right, Miss Sonia? Uh, yes, Prof. Right. Yeah, so please check your junk box. Sometimes uh, the email goes to the junk. Many participants call us and uh, inform us that we didn't receive the set. We ask them to check the junk box and they got the set. Huh? So, certificate yes, even from the uh, they are registered, their registration email, uh, they have to check their SMAP or maybe that their junk folder because uh, I sent all the email. Maybe they can get their data. Actually, the many people say that we didn't receive the data set, but I don't know. They, are, they have the, some email problem. Yeah, yeah. Those of you have uh, registered, until uh, I think tomorrow morning, uh, Miss Sonia has emailed the data to every one of you. So there's no uh, way you miss the email. Huh? We have shared the data with you. Uh, so maybe the email has gone into uh, your junk box. So please make sure you check the junk box also. Okay, please. Okay. The form is already there in the chat box. Uh, it's the uh, it is Samuel Hogg. Uh, brother, it is the form is already in the chat box. Just above your message there. Uh, click on the Prova. chat box and Wait. you can. Hmm. Prova, we have one question uh, in our chat box. Yeah, I see. Uh, if a category has yes and no item is scale form, uh, can you transform item into variable? I, I have answered that question earlier, uh, Ashenafi. Basically, if you have yes and no, uh, the, the choice that you give to the respondents are very limited. Uh, we do not expect that kind of question. You know, We expect the scale. Three scale, four scale, five scale, six scale, seven scale, better. From there, we convert into variable. But again, if you insist that yes and no is enough for you to get the kind of data you want, then you can have one and two. You can still convert into variable. No problem. You can convert into variable. Um, then uh, somebody said if uh, Shibari, right? Okay, Shibari said... Uh, Mentioning is scaling right. If I running the data more than qualitative, and is it suitable to use SPSS too? Definitely, even qualitative study, you can use SPSS. There are way of doing it. There are way of doing it. Uh, descriptive, uh, all those findings can be gathered by using SPSS, even for qualitative study. Okay, uh, but now we have many uh, software available for qualitative study. For example, Atlas T, in vivo. Those are very good software. You can use those also. Before, everyone used to use SPSS for even qualitative and quantitative. But now for qualitative, we do have Atlas T and we have down uh, in vivo. So people uh, prefer to use those softwares, a very efficient software, okay? 
All right. Uh, so, um, if you allow me for today, I would like to call off uh, the day today. <laughs> All right. I would like to end the session. And uh, thank you very much for joining uh, us. And uh, thank you, Ms. Sonia, for putting all the hard work and my team, Brother uh, Salim Mansoor and uh, Brother Rashid. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, okay, someone said I only received the email link by 3 20 p.m. <laughs> we cannot email you the data when you register immediately. You know, what we did, we decided to email the data to you by this morning. Okay, and by this morning. Certificate you don't know. I'm saying that you will receive it immediately. It takes some time huh? because it's yes, 500. Uh, they are uh, asking me that uh, yeah. we have to. Don't worry. So if you fill I in the feedback form, you will day. receive it. Don't worry. Yeah, sometime could be after one day, sometime could be after two days because uh, there will be one by one going, you know, from the software. Don't worry. You will receive the set. Okay? You will receive the set. Don't worry. Muhammad and Naim Azizi. If you do not receive it now, you receive it later, maybe after one day or, one, or two days. Huh? It goes as you fill in one by one, the certificate will be sent by software. Facebook link, please. Uh, Facebook, uh, you can type name Aminul Islam, you know, not Muhammad Aminul Islam. Go to Facebook and type A M I N U L Islam, Aminul Islam. Then you will get my photo there. <laughs> uh, my Facebook, I'm very particular. I only accept the research student mostly. Huh? So if you are uh, doing a master's or PhDs or you, if you are an academic, I will accept you. Uh, I do not automatically accept. I will check your uh, profile and then only I accept you into the Facebook. Okay. All right. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, I pass the session to Ms. Sonia to, uh, to conclude the session, Ms. Sonia. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Uh, it was a really amazing uh, session, especially the hands-on training on the SPSS. I think the people will get uh, lots of the knowledge regarding the SPSS. I mean, there's some techniques uh, regarding the coding and regarding the vector analysis, reliability. It was a really, uh, really was a nice. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. And also, the thank you so much, all participants, to join our session. And uh, I'm really sorry uh, if you face any uh, problem uh, regarding the uh, internet problem or regarding the feedback or regarding the registration. I already emailed all you, all of you the data set. Kindly check your inbox, the map or the junk folder. You, you have to, uh, you already receive your email, but if you not receive your email, you can uh, back to email me. Uh, I am already uh, uh, writing my email address in the chat box. If you still not receive a, a data set in your email address, no problem. I will send you again. Regarding the e-certificate data, uh, e-certificate, uh, the e-certificate you will be the received within a, a one day. Okay, so don't worry about that. All will those who already fill the feedback form, they will get the e-certificate uh, as soon as possible. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joint session thank you so much prof uh, really appreciate it and thank you the all the my collaboration uh, the, and also my team and also the cga jsn uh, thank you thank you so much welcome uh, miss sonia's email the address is there in the chat box uh, she uh, has yes, given prof. it to you yeah sonia.uthm at gmail.com so those of you who like to contact her you can contact her from there okay sonia.uthm at gmail.com and even in my slide, I've shared my email with you also. If you want, you can also, uh, uh, in case if you don't get into Miss Sonia, you can always keep in touch with me, no problem. All right. Thank you very much and uh, all the best. You take care and stay safe and hope to see you soon. Uh, hope to see you soon, okay? All right. Assalamu alaikum and uh, uh, all the best to you.